Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I am going to discuss certain dental anomalies. This is a part 1 video. All these dental anomalies will be discussed in this video. So, if you want this PPT, then I have uploaded it on my website. You can go check that out. Link for the website is given in the description box. Now, let's get started. Dental anomalies. Anomalies means abnormalities and dental we know related to teeth right so dental anomalies are abnormalities that are related to our teeth so dental anomalies are abnormalities of form function position of the teeth bone and tissues of jaw and mouth all right they are caused by multifactorial interactions so there are a number of factors due to which the dental anomalies can be caused and they can be genetic epigenetic or environmental factors and these anomalies are formed during the long process of dental development that is when our teeth are getting formed right so the anomalies can be based on four types first anomaly of size then there can be anomaly of shape then there can be anomaly of number and then there can be anomaly of structure in this video i'm going to discuss these two types that is anomaly that is based on the size and anomaly that is based on the shape so first let's start with anomaly of size in this there can be two types that is microdontia and macrodontia microdontia means that the teeth are smaller than normal as you can look at this word micro micro means small right so the teeth in microdontia condition are smaller than the normal size teeth as you can see here in these pictures few of the teeth like this one and in this all the teeth are you know smaller in size microdontia can be of further two types that is generalized and localized microdontia generalized microdontia means all the teeth are all the teeth are smaller in size it is a general idea that all the teeth are small and the reason for that can be pituitary dwarfism whereas localized microdontia means only certain teeth are going to be smaller in size if you look at this picture here only this particular teeth is smaller in size right so this is an example of localized microdontia whereas in this one all the teeth are smaller in size than the normal one so this is generalized microdontia example of localized microdontia is peg lateral teeth which is basically our maxillary lateral incisor becomes cone shaped if you look at this picture this is the central incisor and this is the lateral incisor and this is the upper jaw right so upper jaw is maxillary jaw so the maxillary lateral incisor become cone shape if you can see this looks like a cone right so this is an example this is called peg lateral and it is an example of localized microdontia then comes macrodontia in which the term macro means big right so the teeth are larger than the normal size it is also subdivided into two generalized and localized in generalized the for reason for generalized can be pituitary gigantism for microdontia it was pituitary dwarfism whereas for generalized macrodontia it is pituitary gigantism as you can see in this picture all the teeth present are larger than the normal size this is an example of the localized macrodontia in which only these two teeth are larger than the normal size right next comes anomaly of shape that is a shape of the person's teeth is changed right so first in this comes gemination what happens in gemination is there is division of single tooth gum by invagination so if you look at this particular area in this figure this is gemination in which we have one root right but this portion the white portion or the animal portion of the teeth we get to see a division in this portion of the teeth as you can see here is the division right so there is division of single tooth gum by invagination and what we due to which what appears is like there are two teeth right one and two teeth it looks like there are two teeth but it is just a single teeth right so overall we can say that there is one teeth increased if we count this particular thing as two teeth but the root is only one in gemination whereas in fusion two teeth unite to form one teeth if you look at this picture 
we have two separate teeth and they have united with each other so we have two roots in this case we can say that there is a one missing tooth because two teeth have united and now it looks like just one teeth so we can say that overall there is one missing tooth if we count this as just one teeth there can be two types of fusion complete fusion and incomplete fusion in complete fusion the roots are also fused whereas in incomplete fusion the roots are not fused only the white portion is fused right as you can see here in this particular picture this is an example of gemination as you can see this invagination right and this exam this is an example of fusion in which two teeth have you know fused with each other then comes concrescence if you look at this picture now it is a condition of teeth with a cementum overlying the root of the at least two teeth joined together so this root area right the cementum is present over the roots now if that cementum of the two roots fuses with each other then that leads to concrescence it usually involves only two teeth the most commonly involved teeth are upper second and third molars so in this case the roots get fused due to fusion of the cementum as you can see this was tooth number one this was tooth number two and they have fused with each other then comes dilaceration it refers to angulation or sharp bend or curve in the root or crown of a formed teeth as you if you look at this particular teeth you can see that the root has bended there's a curve that you can see in this tooth right this did so this is known as dilaceration this dis disturbance is more likely to affect the maxillary incisors so this is seen to happen in maxillary incisors and occurs in permanent dentition then comes dense evaginatus and dense invaginatus these are two terms so in dense evaginatus if you look at this particular picture this is for dense evaginatus this appears as an accessory cusp or globule of enamel on the occlusal surface between buccal and lingual cusp if you look right here here you can see that a globule of enamel is there right uh, we can call it an accessory cusp and this is present on the occlusal surface of the teeth between the buccal and the lingual cusp so there are different cusps right so dense evaginatus occurs between the buccal and lingual cusp the premolars are more likely to be affected than any other teeth so mostly dense evaginatus is seen in the premolars it is more common in men than in women and it is more common in mandibular teeth that is the lower teeth than the maxillary teeth if you look at this particular picture here you can see this these are the dense evaginatus that are seen in the premolars you can see the extra cusp right then comes dense invaginatus it is also known as tooth within a tooth if you look at this picture there is a lingual pit extent extension that you can see this this is what happens in dense invaginatus so there is infolding of enamel into the dentine so it is a rare dental uh, malformation that is found in the teeth where there is infolding of enamel into the dentine the prevalence of this condition is 0.3 to 10 percent affecting mostly the males then the teeth most affected are maxillary lateral incisors in 80 percent of the dense invaginatus maxillary lateral incisors are affected followed by maxillary canines in 20 percent of the cases next comes talons cusp talons cusp is an example of dense evaginatus only so that means there's going to be an extra cusp but this is that this time it is not in premolars this happens in the incisors so there's extra cusp in the lingual side lingual side means the side that your tongue is normally touching that is the lingual side labial side means side that your lips are normally touching side of the tooth that your uh, lips are normally touching so extra cusp is found in the lingual side of the incisors and talons cusp uh, the, as you can see that in this picture here these two are the talons cusp it is also known as eagle's eagle's cusp or eagle's talon beak 
नेक्स्ट कम्स टोरोडोंटिज्म इट इज़ अ कंडीशन दैट इज़ फाउंड इन मोलर टीथ ऑफ ह्यूमन वेयर बाय द बॉडी ऑफ द टूथ एंड द पल्प चैम्बर इज एन लार्ज वर्टिकली एट द एक्सपेंस ऑफ द रूट सो इफ यू लुक एट दिस पिक्चर दिस इज अ नॉर्मल टीथ दिस इज हाइपोडोंटिज्म देर कैन बी थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ टोरोडोंटिज्म हाइपोटोरोडोंटिज्म मीजोटोरोडोंटिज्म एंड हाइपोटोरोडोंटिज्म इन नॉर्मल कंडीशन वी हैव द नॉर्मल पल्प चैम्बर द नॉर्मल वॉल्यूम ऑफ पल्प चैम्बर कैन बी सीनियर इन हाइपोडोंटिज्म देर इज स्लाइट इंक्रीज इन दी पल्प चैम्बर हेयर इन मीजोटोरोडोंटिज्म इवन मोर पल्प चैम्बर एरिया कैन बी सीन एंड इन हाइपर टोरोडोंटिज्म इवन मोर पल्प चैम्बर कैन बी सीन एज अ रिजल्ट द फ्लोर ऑफ द पल्प एंड द फर्केशन ऑफ द टूथ इज मूव एपिकली डाउन द रूट एज यू कैन सी दिस इज अ रेडियोग्राफ फॉर टोरोडोंटिज्म यू कैन क्लियरली सी दिस वन इज हैविंग टोरोडोंटिज्म दीज आर द नॉर्मल टूथ हैविंग नॉर्मल अमाउंट ऑफ पल्प चैम्बर बट दिस इन दिस एरिया यू एरिया यू कैन इजिली सी हाइपर टोरोडोंटिज्म देन कम्स एनिमल पर्ल्स दीज आर डेवलपमेंटल एनिमिली ऑफ टीथ ऑल्सो नोन एज एनिमिलिस एनिमल ड्रॉपलेट्स एनिमल ग्लोब्यूल्स एनिमल नोड्यूल्स एनिमल नॉट्स और एनिमल एग्जॉस्टोसिस सो सिंपली हेयर यू कैन सी इन दिस एरिया देर इज अ एनिमल पर्ल ग्लोब्यूल टाइप थिंग दैट यू कैन सी सो दिस इज एनिमल पर्ल दे आर एक्टोपिक ग्लोब्यूल्स ऑफ एनिमल ऑन दी रूट सर्फेस दिस इज द रूट एरिया राइट एंड हेयर यू कैन सी दिस एनिमल पर्ल नेक्स्ट कम्स शवल शेप teeth lingual extension of lateral borders of incisors this is seen in the lingual extension lingual as i told and on the lateral borders this is a picture of a shovel shaped teeth this area is shovel shaped like right this is the, these are the lateral borders of these incisors this is seen in mongoloids 80 to 85% cases in caucasoids in 2 to 6% cases and negroids 1 to 2% cases then comes cusp of carabelli this is basically an extra cusp that is seen in the maxillary first molars so the cusp of carabelli or also known as carabelli is tubercle or tuberculum anomale of george carabelli it is a small additional cusp that is seen as the mesiopalatal line angle of the maxillary first molars here you can see this is marked over here that this is the cusp of carabella it is basically an extra cusp that is seen in the maxillary first molars then comes protostylid a protostylid is a supernumerary or accessory cusp located on the mesial half of the buccal surface on the molars buccal surface is the surface that is uh, touching your cheek area right so here you can see this particular teeth this is a protostylid and it is seen in less than 1% population so it is a very rare tooth anomaly so this was all about this video thank you for watching